I'm going to show you how to install a Shadow Sox proxy server on Ubuntu. For Shadow Sox, there's two parts to it. There's the client application and the server application. The server application just runs the proxy server. For the client application, there are several options to choose from for each platform. The one that I recommend is Outline. It's the simplest and easiest to use. To connect to your proxy server, all you need is a URI. And it's actually a base64 encoded URI, and uh, we'll see what that looks like later in this tutorial. Okay, so to install Shadow Socks on Ubuntu, I'm going to follow the instructions in the documentation here for Ubuntu and I'm actually just going to use the same command that they have here. Okay, and after that it's installed. It installs in Etsy Shadow Socks, and within there is the config file. So the next thing we need to do is edit the configuration file. Okay, and there's a few lines that I want to change in here. So I'm going to start with server, and this is going to be the IP address of where it's going to run. So in this case, it's just going to be the IP, ad the local IP address of the server, and then I'm going to use uh, NAT rules in the router. So first, I need to look at the IP address of the server. So it's right here. This one that ends in dot one hundred. So once I find that, I'm going to go back into the config file and that's what I'll put here on the line for server. Okay, and the next line, mode TCP and UDP, uh, just leave that one, that's good. Server port, so you can choose the port that you want it to run on. The default is 8388, but I want this to run on 443. So I'm going to change that. Uh, the next thing that you want to change is the password. Um, you definitely want to choose a strong password. Uh, I've tried a 99 character password before and it worked. Uh, this particular one that I'm going to use is 50 characters. Okay, and the next thing that you'll want to change is the encryption method. Uh, so, this one I actually want to change to AES-256. So, you can find the supported encryption method here. Uh, so, I'm just going to copy this one here. And after that, uh, that's all we need to do in the config file. So, I'm just going to save this file. Okay, and uh, the next thing to do is actually to start the application. Okay, so with that started, I'm going to check the status. Okay, and I can see here it's got the wrong cipher. And um, so next, I just want to check what port that it's running on. Okay, 
and yeah I mean I can see it's running localhost 8388 so that's not what I wanted so I'm actually gonna do a restart on this application and it should take on those items that I put in the config so let me check the status okay yeah and I see AES 256 GCM listing on 443 that's the correct IP address I can look at netstat again okay yep yeah, and uh, there you go so we've got UDP and we've got TCP there so that's good so after you do all of that what you want to do next is make the URI and there's actually a tool here that you can use to generate it and the format is up here so it's method password at hostname port so the method well that was actually the encryption so I'm just gonna come back here and copy so it's gonna be AES 256 GCM Okay, and the next thing was the password, and that's actually going to be this 50 character password here. Okay, and the next thing was the hostname or the IP address. So if you have DNS set up, you could use that um, hostname. Uh, but in this case, I'm just using the IP address. Okay, and the next thing is the port. So um, you notice I'm just using the internal IP address uh, because in this tutorial, everything here really is just for testing. Um, when you put this into production on your network um, and you have the NAT rules set up to send the traffic to the internal instance here like this one here um, you would actually want to put your external IP address here so your public IP address uh, so once you've done all of that and used the tool here you can see that it generated the base 64 encoded string and you can copy everything here except for that last part the hashtag example server so this is actually just um, it's like a note so you can put like the name of the server or things like that there so this is the URI that you will use in your client application to connect to the proxy server and um, yeah I mean that is pretty much it your shadow socks should be working um, you can actually put it on uh, you can actually run a test on your local network so just kind of leave it as it is now um, put the internal IP address in here and then you know go on the application on your phone and uh, use this URI and try uh, testing connecting to it over the local network you know before you uh, connect it expose it to the internet um, now the thing with this encoded string here is um, you will want to protect this just like it's a password um, and really it's a good idea to put this in your password manager because if anyone gets a hold of this they can essentially connect to your proxy server and do whatever they want so definitely uh, protect this value here so the next thing that I'm going to show you is uh, optional it's called fail to ban and fail to ban is uh, a separate application that you can install and it will read the logs for uh, failed authentication and after a certain threshold which I believe is uh, three failed logins it will actually block the IP address so definitely a very useful tool for uh, anything that you're going to expose uh, publicly on the internet so what I'm going to do here is install fail to ban
Okay, yeah, and uh, once you have uh, Filter Man installed, what you'll need to do is add the filter. So the filter has the logic in it that Filter Man is going to use to read the logs. And by the way, uh, Shadow Socks actually writes to um, Syslog. So it's going to be reading Syslog. So uh, you can copy and paste this um, into the terminal here and it will create that file for you. Um, I actually like using uh, Nano to do this so I'm actually just going to copy this and I'm going to do that and it's actually going to create this new file for me since it doesn't exist the shadow socks uh, configuration file and then I'm going to copy everything from includes down to date pattern and I'm going to paste it in here and after that I will just save the file so our filter is in there uh, this is an example log, what it will look like in syslog. So the next thing is to update the jail uh, configuration. So this particular .local file, it may not be there. So let me check. see yeah so that jail.local file it's not in here so I'm going to go ahead and create it and I'm going to copy everything into here and within this configuration uh, what you'll want to change is the port if you're using a custom port like I am so I'm going to put 443 there uh, max retard try is three so um, that is the amount of fail logins that you're going to allow uh, so I think three is good number so I'm just gonna leave that and I will save okay and after that we just kind of follow the instructions here and um, I'm just going to copy what they have here. Well, actually, I'll just type it in. So, system control restart fail to ban. Okay, and then I'm going to do enable. So, this will make the application start um, on startup. So, whenever the system starts right and then I'm going to do start fail to man and next check the status okay yeah active running everything looks good there um, the next thing I'm going to look at here is actually checking um, the status of what fail to man is doing so I'm going to use that last command there fail to ban dash client status shadow socks libv okay and this is just going to give me a summary of the activity that's going on so uh, it will show you like the number of IP addresses that have already been banned and uh, how many failed logins, so definitely a useful tool to have.